Today on the Game Time Guru Podcast, we're bringing on a guest that is a streetball legend out of California who had quite the journey with the And One Mixtape Tour, the Hoop Tainers. He traveled all around the world, and now he's helping run McLean Sports. You don't want to miss this episode of the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Guru! If you're sick of the mainstream sports outlets, well, so was I. So I started my own show. I'm Shane Larson, and this is the Game Time Guru. It's different than other talk shows. I'm providing a panoramic view on sports so you can see them through a different lens. So buckle up and let's go. What's up, everybody? Shane Larson here, host of the Game Time Guru Podcast. I'm excited to have you with me. If this is your first time listening to the show, what an awesome interview to join in on. Uh, we've got Jay Brantley, who is a streetball legend out of California, who did stints with the And One Mixtape Tour, the Hoop Tainers. He traveled all around the world playing the sport of basketball, building some crazy good connections. And now he's given back by running an apparel company called McLean Sports, which we are going to talk about today. You don't want to miss this one. Jay's got some awesome stories. He's met some awesome people. So you're going to love what he has to say. And I want to make sure you guys remember that this episode of the Game Time Guru podcast is being brought to you by Nation's Best Football, home of the Nation's Best Ballers and Recruits. Go check them out on Instagram. Give them a follow. This interview wouldn't have been possible without Bob Smith and the Nation's Best team um, as we are collaborating, the Game Time Guru and Nation's Best together. He got me in touch with Jay Brantley, and it's one of the most awesome interviews we could have. So shout out to Nation's Best. Go give them a follow. Um, and, and be on the lookout as well. So Nation's Best and... Uh, the Game Time Guru. We're going to be collaborating and bringing you guys some amazing content in the near future. So you guys should be uh, checking that out. It's a super awesome opportunity that has presented itself. And um, we're excited to have uh, Nation's Best Football as someone that we can uh, partner up with and, and work together with to bring you guys more sports content. So guys, I'm excited to bring um, Jay Brantley onto the show. I want to remind you as well to leave me a review. Okay, so just go on to your, your favorite podcast platform. Make sure you're subscribed to this show. If you're a first-time listener, make sure you're subscribed to the show, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Stitcher, whatever podcast platform you're listening on. But give me a review, especially on Apple Podcasts. And, and I, I want to give this example to everyone. If you go to Amazon, for instance, and you're buying a product and you've never used that product before, chances are you're going to look at the reviews on that product. You're going to see, okay, it's a four and a half out of five star or whatever. And you're going to see why it's not a five out of five star. So you're going to go look at the reviews. It's the same concept with the podcast. People, there's so many podcasts out there, so many shows, and people are looking for new content to listen to. And so when they come across the Game Time Guru podcast, they might be like, well, why should I listen to this one over other ones? So they might look at the reviews. So I just ask that you please leave me a review. That's the way that I ask my listeners to give back to me. Um, And so that, you know, if you've been on my show, if you've been a guest, or if you're a listener to the show, please, just leave me a review. It's free. It doesn't take much time at all. So that's that's all I ask for you guys to do to help me out as we continue to grow this show. A uh, huge shout out to all my listeners and my followers and supporters. If you want to give me a, a, a follow on Instagram, we always are posting sports content. I love to interact with all of my uh, followers. Uh, we you know post sports content and just chat it up about sports throughout the day, and it's just fun. So make sure to give me a follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Guys, I don't want to waste any more of your time. I want to bring on Jay Brantley onto the show so he can tell his story. It's a super awesome interview. So uh, if you're driving to work, whatever you're doing, listening to the show at the gym, I don't care. Just get ready, listen in, and uh, enjoy the show. What's up, everyone? Welcome out to the Game Time Guru Podcast. We want to welcome onto our show the man that I've been talking about in the entire introduction for the last three minutes. His name is Jay Brantley, also known as Jay Boogie. That was his street ball name. But Jay, we want to say thanks for joining the Game Time Guru Podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's an honor to have you on the show with us, Jay. So, you know, you, you run McLean Sports, and we're going to get into that a little bit later on the show, but I just want you to give us a quick two-sentence rundown, if you can, just something quick about McLean without giving away too much detail so we can touch base on that later. I, I, I'll say this. McLean Sportswear is an active lifestyle brand, uh, we, we have a slogan, real game, real gear. First to be in the gym, the last to leave. If it's football, first on the field, last to leave the field. That's just, you know, our, our mantra. Uh, we truly believe in that. And, um, you know, it kind of stems from my playing career and my uh, coaching career. Okay. Okay. Awesome, man. And McLean Sports is a little bit different than just another apparel company, right? Because you have such a story and history behind 
your game and, and what you do and what you bring to life at, at McLean. So I want you to share that with us today. You were a streetball legend, Jay, a streetball legend. And some of the listeners that might be a little bit younger might not even realize what streetball is, but the guys that grew up around my time and a little bit older, they they grew up watching And One, uh, the And One Mixtape Tours. They know what that is, and so they understand it. But I want you to explain your journey as not only a streetballer, but a traditional basketball player and, and what that journey took you through. You know, I call it modern day street ball and playground. You know, obviously the other people that paved the way for us uh, were, you know, not only NBA players, but uh, they, they were also playground players. Back in the day, uh, it was a sense of the playground and the, and, and the professional sports and even college united. And it started with Holocom Rucker Park, where you had uh, some notable NBA players come out and play against the local uh, legends. And uh, street ball birth was definitely out of uh, New York City, uh, Harlem 155th Street. Uh, from that point, uh, it was, you know, ingratiated in the game. Uh, when you see the crossovers, when you see someone do highlights, because prior to that, the game was just 100% fundamentals. But uh, when these guys kind of came out and did that, it was the birth of the ABA. With Julia Serving, Dr. J, Tiny Archibald, Dan Nissel, a few other notables. And so with that combination, uh, Streetball pretty much gave it that birth of what the NBA is today. Uh, fast forward, um, Plague, I'll say Streetball in the uh, modern era came about uh, in the late 90s. Um, a t-shirt company called And One. Uh, had the idea of, you know, uh, they didn't really have the money to, you know, compete with some of the bigger brands, Nike, uh, well, Nike and Adidas at the time in the basketball world. Oh, and I mentioned Converse. Uh, so they had an idea of putting, you know, their products on local legends uh, out in the uh, New York, you know, parks. It became real, real popular. And there was a kid by the name of Rayford Austin uh, that uh, is a good friend of mine, we played around in the same era, was this local legend that was 12 years old, and his coach out of Cardoza High School uh, just start uh, recording him. Well, you guys that don't know, this was before, uh, you know, the uh, social media. This was before YouTube. This was all about uh, tapes, VHS tapes. And so his coach just recorded his, his games just to kind of, you know, uh, see how he played in the summer. And lo and behold, his coach made highlight tapes, and they became legends. Uh, I'm here all, out on the West Coast uh, just doing my thing, playing. Uh, I was a, a All-American high school uh, basketball player. But the game, you know, streetball was always enamored to us uh, because of the fact that we played out at the Venice Beach Courts. We played at local uh, recreation centers, and that's where we was able to really do our thing, you know, amidst the uh, fundamentals of when we played our regular season basketball at the high school level or whatever. So I'm going to move quickly. Uh, it became a phenomenon. Uh, it was the birth of the first and one mixtape uh, from these, these tapes. And so they, had, they felt they had something going. And this was around the time where Iverson came about. Allen Iverson uh, really brought street ball to the NBA. And then the N1 mixtape tour, as it started to grow, uh, they contacted me because I was known as one of the top uh, West Coast players. And so when they got a hold of me, they said, hey, Jay, we're thinking about doing this tour. Why don't you bring a couple of top guys out this way? And uh, we'll bring some of the East Coast guys and we'll just have some fun and play. That was the birth of Volume 3. And from that point, it became a marketing phenomenon. Let me tell you, um, we were touring the world. We were uh, really showcasing our ability to really put on highlight, enjoy ourselves playing the game that we love. But I always say the most important thing was, was that we – we call it real game, you know, real game flashy type play because we were competitive, but at the same time, we wanted to put on a show. 
And uh, from that point, uh, the bigger companies start to say, well, wow, let's take note of this. So Nike created Battleground. Um, Reebok started to sponsor a lot of the uh, street ball tournaments. And then we created what is called, I think to this day, one of the best travel uh, playground teams of all time, the L.A. Hoop Tainers. What's unique about the L.A. Hoop Tainers was that we didn't have no major sponsor, no major shoe backing, but we, we invested in our own money and took off and traveled the world. And what we did was we just didn't play other local street ball guys. We wanted to test our ability and play against Olympic national teams, but play our style of play. Uh, so that enabled us when we went to uh, Ukraine to play their national team, uh, Africa, Russia, China, you name it. And to this day, I always really – I'm always proud of the record that we had in competitive atmosphere on their home court. We had a, we played a total of 70 games through our tenure and we only lost two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You only lost two games during that tenure. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, um, if you get a chance, Shane, I'll, I'll send you some video if you haven't already had it. But I mean, these, these guys, these were international Olympic teams and to us to play, you know, our style of play and non-NBA players at the time, we didn't have that to be competitive, really put it globally. And then and one had the idea later to do their world tour, but I always felt that to make game, the game real, like what my company name is real game, real gear. You have to play a real game, but also be expressive of your ability, if you're a shooter, make it, make it exciting shooting that ball. If you can cross over, if you can do other things, put that and add that spice to your game. If you can do it all, hey, do it all. But it was about expression. And so um, that, was, that was really the birth of modern-day street ball, and you see it today, you know. And so I'm really proud to be – one of the forefathers of that. Man, as you're talking, Jay, I'm literally getting chills because I know the and one stuff. Like I grew up watching and one mixtape tours. Like Rafe Austin, like I know that Skip to My Lou, I the professor, all those guys, like I know those names. And so it's cool to see that you were like part of that movement. That's huge. Like you were part of a huge movement back then. And the fact that you guys went over there and you took it global is insane. That's super insane. So it's just awesome hearing you say that. Now, dude, I I actually had and one shoes back in eighth grade, just so that can be known. Those are my favorite basketball shoes of all time. So like I was kind of involved with like it's like surrounding myself with all that stuff, and I would always watch the mixtape tours. That's just so crazy. So I'm I'm curious though. You mentioned you you played over seventy games with the hoop tainers. How long did that whole entire thing go? You mentioned it was you played over seventy games during the tenure, but how long exactly was that uh, with the hoop tainers? So uh, we, um, I started the Hoop Tainers uh, in 07, and we went uh, for about a four-year run to 2011. Uh, but after that, I wanted to utilize our experiences, our global travel, because we did more than just play exhibition games. We uh, really helped raise money, uh, not only for the uh, country's ministry, but also for, you know, to help them raise money for kids like us growing up. You know, I grew up in uh, South Central L.A., uh, didn't have a lot of opportunities, but these kids and these, uh, third, some of them were third world countries, really didn't have shoes to play. I remember one instance, I, went, I hosted a camp in Liberia, Africa, and kids showed up with no shoes. And it broke my heart, but what I did was I said, you know what? And this was kind of the start, the turning wheels of McLean. You know what? I said, I'm going to purchase a shoe so everyone that doesn't have shoes could participate in our camp. And I did that with no media attention. I never mentioned that to this day, what I did. And that inspired me to say, you know what? Maybe through my creativity for sports, basketball, my love, 
I could uh, have that opportunity to create on the uh, manufacturing and apparel side. Because the other thing was, when we every time we played in a game, the energy was loved. Everybody wanted a jersey. They wanted shorts. They wanted so you know we were we were giving away our uniforms. We literally, I literally had to make and produce six to seven sets of uniforms each time because we would just give them away. And that just inspired me, you know, to create a brand. And this is later, you know. Um, you know, McLean was still a thought process at towards the end of the Hootainers, but it didn't go into full uh, mold until about 2012. So it, it, the, the seed was planted. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just proud, you know, to – understand that we're at the, we truly feel we're at the beginning um, of what is to come, you know, to combine, you know, youth sports, um, professional sports, sports apparel, and uh, custom. I put my passion, when I remember when I told you earlier, uh, ex- expression uh, on the court into my work. So, uh, you know, what we do at McLean is, we are very creative in our expression of terms of what we provide, you know, for teams and for organizations. So I'm really proud of that. Man, it's awesome because I wrote down while you were talking, I was writing down notes and expression is what I wrote down. So you were talking about how you have expression on the court and how with McLean, you're, you're allowing others to have that expression on the court as well. It's, it's crazy to see how the, the correlation goes there together. It's awesome. And kind of already answered that question for me then that I was about to form when I was writing the notes. So appreciate you doing that. So anyways, you, you mentioned though, that you're, you played around the world, Jay, you played around the world. You saw a lot of different cultures, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different styles. And I'm, I'm sure that kind of plays into it. Now, to my understanding, McLean sports comes out of New York. You're out of California. Those are two totally different styles. When it came to the street ball world, California and New York, a little bit different. You know, New York was the home of it all. You mentioned it, Rucker Park, all that stuff. The legends came out of there. And uh, I'm curious, how did that happen where California and, you know, New York clashed together to, to make McLean sports? Well, here's the thing. Uh, my best friend is the co-founder of McLean Sports. He's in New York. His name is Hanif Salim. He was a New York uh, kid out of Queens at the time, and he started um, a blog because back then it was the big thing was uh, blogs, you know, to discuss and talk about because I was one of the few on a full two-page, I guess, interview on Slam Magazine without any backing, without any support. They just... They just saw and believed and understood the movement. And to this day, you know, they chose me and I'm, I'm very honored for that. And so he caught wind of that and said, you know, i got this blog. I'm out of New York. Um, I saw you guys play in New York when you came out. Um, I want to do an article and write up on you. And I was like, cool. Yeah. What's your name? Um, Hanif, uh, you know, I'm a computer, uh, my background is uh, computer tech, but I love the game. Um, and so we hit it off. This was literally in 2004. Yes. And so, you know, it was, it just felt right. So I, I, I did the article. Uh, it was it was on uh, some several uh, publication blogs, which was really cool. Uh, Bounce Magazine uh, out of New York. Slam, uh, Hoops Doctor picked it up, and we became friends. Uh, we talked about, you know, what we want to do. To, obviously, he liked the Hootainers. He wanted to say, hey, let me, uh, you know, be a part of it. So he went on his trip with us to Brazil. And Brazil was amazing, and so that's where we built our connection, and that's where we started to talk and lay the groundwork for McLean and Boogie 7 Sports. Um, because he saw all the people taking all of our stuff. Like, I want this, I want that. And then he asked me, he said, hey, I'm starting a T-shirt company, Legendary Courts uh, of New York City. And I was like, hey, there's some Legendary Courts everywhere. Let's create a line uh, that, that kind of identifies with all the Legendary Courts of the major cities. And so he agreed. 
and uh, we started to put the artwork together, and we created the McLean Legendary Court Series. But here's the thing. At the time, it was still uh, something that, you know, it was more of a passion. Just let's put out some T-shirts to really promote the hoop trainers, kind of promote what we're doing, promote your blog, Fast Break. And fast forward, uh, six months later, he said, hey, I got a name. Uh, I want you to partner up with me on this. And I was like, okay, what is the name? I don't, don't, and I'm, I'm a funny guy. And I was like, don't do fast break. That's kind of generic, bro. He said, no. And, uh, remember you mentioned one of the things, here's a story that I'm going to share with you. He's going to, he's going to laugh at me, but I'm, I'm going to tell it anyway. The name McLean. So the word McLean. So I said, he said, McLean, I said, well, how'd you, how'd you come up with that? That's, that's not a name in the dictionary. He said, no, it's not. He said, uh, the girl, he's married now, said the girl I was dating at the time, I don't know why I did it. We just combined it, our names. You know, my last name is Celine. Uh, her name was, I don't even remember, but it started with an M. Let's put that together. And he said, made it McLean. And then I said, all right, man, she's going to be coming back for royalties. You better be careful with that. So he laughed. <laughs> and to this day, we decided to keep it. And then I asked him, do you have a de definition for it? He was like, nah, I don't. I said, how about this? Truth in its creation. I'll say that again. Truth in its creation. What that means is there's truth in what we are creating. It's not fraudulent. It's real. It's not, it's not a Hollywood thing. It's not a, you know, it's not something of that nature. This is two guys coming together through their experiences, and there's only truth in that. And we say in its creation. So he was like, cool. All right. And then we was off to the races. I moved quickly on this. So the t-shirt company, went, the t-shirt startup went really, really well. And we started to get a lot of people saying, well, shoot, you do t-shirts, do you do uniforms? And I was like, oh, no, not at this time. You know, uh, let me, let me get back. Let me talk to, let me talk to my partner and see what we can do. Then I remembered when I played in China, I said, you know, China is really known for, you know, manufacturing. And I remember another funny story. You know, China does, you know, they do the bootlegs, but they got the authentic stuff too. So they, they took a love, they took an affinity for our, our team. And we was getting, we was getting like Gucci, uh, top notch stuff for like the real stuff, not the knockoffs because they liked it. They was like, okay, we're going to take you in the room where the real stuff is, not the knockoffs. We was like, okay, cool. And so I, I kept in touch with that guy. He was an African guy but just knew his way around. Yeah, it was a lot of Africans that used to travel to China and Guangzhou to, to buy stuff to send back to their country to sell. So I was like, man, I'm thinking about, you know, start, you know, doing uniforms. You know, I need, I need, I need to connect, connect this up. And so we outsourced in China. Like anything, you, you get the bumps and bruises because you're trying to figure it out. But, we got through that, and then we were able to, with our own money, because, like I said, no investments. We invested in ourselves. We purchased our own manufacturing plants, one in Singapore and one in the States, and those are running to this day. That was, but, but like I tell people that's trying to start something, believe in yourself, trust in yourself, and uh, the other thing is, you know, no matter – where you start, it's how you finish. And so that's kind of the rough part. That, that's kind of the quick part of that story. For sure, for sure. And one thing that I admire about you, Jay, is the fact that you actually took an idea and you brought it to life. So many people in entrepreneurship, um, they have these ideas and it's, it's there's so many, you know, things that they want to do, but they never actually do them because of all the, the bumps and bruises that you have to go through. And I think you can utilize your background in basketball and sports and everything and just the, the grind and the hustle that you have to go through in, in sports and translate into business. And you were able to get through all the bumps and bruises in the business world. And now you're taking off with that idea. I think it's awesome that you guys were able to do that. Now, I'm curious from 
um, the the apparel side of things. Jay, let's say a team reaches out to you and they want to do something like get a, get a jersey concept put together and and have those made. What is the process you guys go through in order to you know make those logos? Do you interview the individuals that like those teams and get their story, learn more about them, their city, and their background, so that you can make something that's more I guess, personalized to that team and that city? Well, that's a great question. Um, I always say um, in, in, in whatever, you know, whatever um, career choice, whatever thing you do, you know, um, it's, about, it's about studying to improve. Um, in basketball, things became second nature to me because I worked on my craft. Um, I, I put hours in the gym. Um, I understood and studied film. I studied my opponent, even my teammates. As a point guard, you know, it was my job to understand everyone's tendencies, everyone, where they like the ball, uh, what's their favorite color, you know, what did they have a bad day today, if they broke up with their girlfriend, you know, don't say certain things. You know, whatever the case may be, I, it's about understanding the culture and understanding who your customer, your teammate is. And so in this world of sports, you know, it's our, it, it was my job at McLean and even our needs to a certain extent to really understand who our customer is. So we get a chance to, you know, if, if we just met them, uh, we have a sit down with them conversation. Um, if we can't talk to them in person, uh, we have a conversation via phone. Um, I just ask them, you know, who are you? What's your passion? Why you started this? Um, if they have something specific that they want to, you know, really just say, hey, this is what I want, then cool. Uh, but we always use our, you know, our expertise and our knowledge to help them. A lot of times they have something, but we'll enhance it. The other thing is when we have people that come in that have absolutely no idea what they want, we, we help them. We say, hey, you know, what is, what is your style? You know, because style gives you a platform and an understanding. Then once you start that, it's like a blank canvas. It, it, it gives you direction. Then once you start that, then we can kind of mold it into what their personality is. So a lot of manufacturers don't do that. They just basically say, what do you want? Send us what you have. Um, if, you, if you're looking for a logo, uh, tell us what it is and we'll make it, you know, to me, you know, it's not about that. It's about really understanding your customer to the point where some customers have become friends. You know, we truly believe that, uh, this is our passion and it's a movement, not just something we're giving to people, but something that it can make them feel proud. So when they wear our uniform and they're happy about the service and what the style is, we feel good about that. And so we utilize our social media platform to give them shout outs, to uh, enhance and help build their brand and their company uh, by telling people, hey, this is a good group, uh, a good organization. Uh, sign, you know, sign up with them. Consider uh, joining them. And why do I say that? Because we know them because we took the time to really get the understanding of who they are. And that's ultimately what and who McLean is. You know what I what I'm noticing, Jay, throughout this conversation, once again, guys, this is Jay Brantley from McLean Sports on the show with us today. Uh, what I'm noticing about you guys is this is different than just, you know, a couple of business guys that had a ton of money and just threw it out there and they don't really care about their clients. They just want the, the paycheck at the end of it. You guys actually care about what you're doing. And that's you're taking the time to personalize all these orders that come through and stuff like that. So um, I really respect that and um, appreciate that from your guys' perspective and the, the angle that you take on this. Now, let's say, Jay, somebody from my hometown here in Idaho wants to, you know, get a hold of you. They, they hear this, this podcast and they're like, Hey, well, I want, I want some customized jerseys for our squads. Um, how could they get a hold of you? Okay. I gotta, I gotta make a quick point before we get into that. Idaho is one of the few is, is, is a, is a second home to me. And I'll tell you why I attended. This is, here's a true story. Uh, when I came out of high school, uh, I wasn't, I, I was, I was recruited okay, but at 5'11", even though um, I was uh, player, of the, uh, player of the year in my area 
and I did a lot of great things, uh, a lot of top schools were hesitant on, you know, taking a chance and offering me a scholarship. So I opted, which was popular back then, even probably now, to go to a junior college. Uh, fast forward, looking at junior colleges, I was going to attend one in, uh, one in California because I didn't want to go too far. But I get a call, coached by the name of Steve Irons out of College of Southern Idaho in Twin Falls. Said, Jay, we, I've seen, you know, you play in uh, College Summer League. Um, I think you can really help us and, and support. And I heard about CSI because CSI has a really big tradition on uh, uh, junior colleges. They've won national championships. But I was having, I was like, Idaho. <laughs> I, 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 it's, I know it's north of Utah, and I haven't been in any of those places. I, I had no idea, but I took a visit. They, uh, they treated, you know, they treated us well, but the key thing that they, they told me, which made me sign with them, was you're going to have to earn what, you know, earn your spot here. But we're going to give you all the resources to make that happen if, you know, as far as you getting the opportunity to get other major schools scholarships after you finish your tenure here. And I went to CSI. So Twin Falls to this day is uh, a second home. And here's the last thing. And this is, this is I would say, 360 degrees of separation. I get a call uh, two weeks ago from my college CSI teammate out of Alabama called, is they call, we used to call him Chiz. He, he was, he was the, he was the old, he was the old soul of the team, right? Chiz, Dwayne Chiz now is about to do business with us in the Bikers Association. Kids is big in that. And so now we're doing business, and this is about to be something really special for Mama McLean because it's an untapped market, and it's incredibly huge. But I, put, I take it back to say without Idaho CSI, I wouldn't have met Dwayne Chiz, and we wouldn't have had this opportunity. See how that works? Now let me get back to the question. I just had to mention that so your your listeners will understand that, oh. you know, Idaho is a special place for me and it always will be. Um, you know, every, everything is done, you know, everything is done online, uh, but we like to make it a more personal feel. Uh, we have a direct line where you can contact uh, myself, my partner, or one of our reps, but I like to, I'm hands-on. So, you know, it goes back to let's have a conversation. Um, we'll obviously, uh, you know, have our team send you out um, some things digitally. We'll make um, mock-ups, artwork, if uh, there's an interest there. And um, we're about setting deals. Trust me, we want to be a partner for what you do. Uh, I offer sponsorship packages. Uh, we do a lot of things that are bundles. So my first priority is helping you reach your goals as far as, you know, as far as someone giving you the look that you need, but also, too, inspiring you, which I tried to do when I did the hoop tainers and McLean and even and one to help you inspire your, your, your participants in your program. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, you know, with sports growing in the, you know, state of Idaho, yeah, I know you've mentioned, you know, basketball and football are your main customers right now. Are you open to potentially looking at rugby? I've had a rugby coach on my show, a couple of rugby guests on the show, and rugby is a huge sport that's growing in the, in the state of Idaho. A lot of club teams getting started up, high school teams, stuff like that. Are you guys open to, to the rugby field at all? Yes, absolutely. Um, rugby uh, is it's so funny because my manufacturer is like my brother. He always, he always teased me, Jay, we, we got rugby ready, but what's going on? You know, and I said, just slow down. Like, we there. We, um, I got this new design for rugby. So 
it's funny because we might have better rugby uniforms than any other sport, but we do more of basketball, football than rugby. But his passion for rugby, because he's a rugby player, he's out of Australia. Funny, funny guy. And that's big out there. So he's like, okay, Jay, I'm waiting. So we've done a few things rugby, but let me tell you, with my, my manager, he he's ready. So if you guys have rugby that, that needs to be serviced, hockey, uh, we could definitely service that. Not a problem. That is awesome. Like I said, we've had a couple of rugby guests. i got a lot of rugby fans that listen to the show. Um, so that would be super cool in the future if you guys could you know, hit that up because uh, there might be some opportunity there. Now, I'm curious, Jay, before we end the show here, I want to ask you a few questions. You've been around the game of basketball for so long. Uh, streetball legend out of California. You know, you've been with the And One Mixtape, the Hoop Tanners, everybody that we've discussed earlier in the show. Who is the best player or players that you have been around during your career, whether that was in high school, college, or through the, the street ball circuit, um, who was who would you say is the best player or players that you have faced in your career? This is a, it's a great question. You, you know, I have to take a back. Um, the, there was a, a real fortunate thing that I, I, I was a part of, and I tr- I'll truly say the best competition I've ever had wasn't in an actual game. It was in a pickup run. It was in pickup runs. And they were at UCLA when I played with Magic Johnson's travel ball team. At UCLA, even now, and I'll send you video of, um, of it too, Shane, of what they have going on. All the top NBA players, uh, collegiate uh, UCLA guys, come down to UCLA in the summer. Right now, it's, it's, it's who's who. You know, everybody has have graced that pickup run. When I um, was really in the midst of it, probably uh, I'll say around between 2007 to about 12, I'll say the toughest player, the toughest team that we faced. Get this. So on the team, they had Shaq, KD, um, not, not, uh, not Kevin Durant, but uh, no, K- KG. Kevin Garnett, Jason Kidd, uh, Steve Nash, and I don't know the other guy. It didn't even matter at that point. <laughs> and we, and right, it could, it, it could have been a janitor, dude. Uh, who cares at that point? We beat them, and uh, it, 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 it probably we beat them. Uh, game went up to like seven, and we beat them. But here's the thing: with non NBA players. But here's the thing, if, and I'm, I'm a realist, truth in this creation. We played them 50 times. We only win that one game. Let's be honest here. Because after it was the last game of that day, and Shaq was heated. Like, and I know if we would have played them again, Shaq probably would have scored all eight points just dunking on, on, on our heads and necks. But it was, let me tell you, it was a great experience. Uh, I'll say one-on-one matchup would have to be, uh, wow. Um, it was a guy, you know what? It was a, it was a guy, I played NBA players. I played against Derek Fisher, Ty Lue, Chauncey Billups, uh, a lot of guys. But the guy, he was, he was a, he was a legend in the D.C. area. They call him Kurt Smith. He, to me, was the uh, founder. You know Tim Hardaway with the with the two step crossover, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I remember him. Tim Hardaway got that from Kurt Smith. This guy was unbelievable. He was strong. He was like a Tim Hardaway. So I'll say he was my toughest guy I had to kind of deal with because a lot of guys that were taller than me, I was I was fast. You couldn't, you couldn't keep me in front of you. It, it was impossible. It was like Allen Iverson fast. I never played against AI, but um, I prob- that probably probably would have been that was everybody's toughest competition in this prime. AI was it, you know, to me, and we all, you know, really looked up to him. But I had that type speed, and I was left-handed. So, yeah, imagine that. It, you're not, you're not standing in front of me. But Kurt was so strong, 
So he he we pretty much balance each other out with that. And when I'll go fast, super quick, he'll give you a bump, and it's like whoa. So uh, Kurt Smith, uh, DC legend, man, had to be. All right, the DC legend, Kurt Smith. Shout out to him. I like that, man. Good story there. And I, I know what you mean. Like some of those guys that are big boys, like you can be fast and everything, but all you, all it takes is a little bit of a bump of the body, and it derails you a little bit from where you're going. So you can be f- as fast as you want, but uh, you get the the big body on you. It'll, it'll bump but my you. left hand was a real thing because it's too late by the time they figure out I'm left-handed. You know, I use both hands. But but when they figure out, wait, he's left-handed, the game's over. <laughs> yeah, you were probably the, the frustrating one that everybody had to guard back then, huh? Right, right. You you you, you know, all your principles to guard a right-handed player go out the window, and you're like, geez. But, you know, it's – but you know what? Um, I played a lot of great players, and I, and, and I don't want to disrespect any. Uh, all the players that I mentioned were very tough players, even the ones that I did not mention. Um, you know, it, I, I just have the love and respect of the game and the purity of the game. For sure, man, for sure. And I appreciate you, Jay, and, and your storytelling ability to kind of shed some light, bring light to, to what this is and what you've got going on. It's super interesting to hear from your perspective. And I'm curious, Jay, it's only about, what, five to seven years old right now. It's already on a on a good upswing what can we expect from McLean Sports and what you've got going on with the business in the next five to seven years? We we have, you know, our foundation is set. I think the, the, the second phase is to ingratiate our ability to, you know, perform and produce uh, not only just uh, custom uniforms, but we do, uh, we, we do women's wear. We do custom performance uh, items such as bags, uh, decals. Um, we're into the technological uh, part of it, uh, three-dimensional printing. Um, I'm working on hologram printing. Yes, hologram printing. We wow. have a shoe line. We have a shoe line now that I'll send you the information for, where people can, like, like build a bear. You can build your own shoe more with the design aspect of it. Um, yes. So you 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 definitely pass that on to your listeners because it do, it's not just basketball it's it's all sports and um, so we're doing those things but the most important thing is having you know cr- getting on platforms like yours uh, which we really appreciate you having us on and just you know creating you know new not I wouldn't even call them fans but you know new building new relationships and new partnerships because we truly feel that if we do something for you, we're partners and uh, we just want to grow. Our foundation is there. We just, it's just now time to get, look, look get, the, get on a road trip. If you're a comedian, you know, when you go on tour or you're a musician, now it's time for the world to see who you are and to create new friends and build new relationships. That's where McLean is in. Man, I love the whole shoe thing that you've got going on. That's going to be super sick when you get that going. It's like just like in sports, once again, probably <laughs> like yourself in, at your position, always staying one step ahead of your opponents, right? I think we were inspiration to a lot of brands. Um, I'll say this, and I forgot to mention this. Uh, when before, you know, we really wanted to kind of break on our own and do our own design. Uh, Nike and Under Armour wanted us to do licenses, and even and one. Uh, and one, that's how we broke in truly into the uniform business. The last um, mixtape uh, series, which was a uh, reality show uh, based upon the professor, which is a good friend of mine to this day, winning the competition. And that took and one to the next level because you had this kid, Grayson, out of Portland, Oregon, uh, shocked the world. And it wasn't just about an African American thing. It was it was a people thing. And this kid, uh, which who's an incredible person, a human being, and we're still friends to this day, uh, put street ball to another level. And so, with that said, we did the mixtape uh, final season of those uniforms, and that took the attention of other brands that wanted us to do smaller runs. We did some stuff for Nike Battleground. We did, uh, you know, 
uh, Under Armour. And the reason why I couldn't mention it at that time was because under a licensing agreement, you can't really share, but we no longer are under that contract. So I honestly think they took a couple of our ideas, which is fine. I think the best form of flattery is when people copy you. We were doing faded patterns before they became popular. I was playing around and testing that back in uh, 09 or 010. Yeah, 09. Faded. No one was doing that. Nike came and did that later on. So we're proud, you know, to say that. But now it's time to kind of let people know who we are. And, you know, and also I want to make a message to you guys that are starting anything, uh, whatever it is. You know, don't be, don't think because you're small, you're starting small. Because always remember, great things can start from a small place. And those big companies and whoever your competition is is watching because that's where they take their ideas from. The smaller companies that you know that are trying to come up. And I'm gonna be honest, sometimes they hope that you fail so they can take your idea and move on. But we're not going anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's not because of all 100% because of me and my business partner and our team. It's because the fans and our supporters believe in us. And as long as they believe in us, McLean, Boogie 7 Sports, will be here for a very long time. That's awesome, man. I I look forward to seeing where you guys go with this. And it's some good words of inspiration and – Information for the rest of us, anybody who's got their own, you know, ventures that they're going on, like, don't give up, don't quit. Uh, those big name brands, those big people, they're looking for ideas and they're waiting for you to fail, just like Jay said. So uh, keep going. So I appreciate you, Jay. Once again, this was Jay Brantley, the California streetball legend uh, who just joined us for this interview uh, to talk about his his journey as well as, you know, his apparel company, McLean Sports. Make sure to go check that out. You guys know the drill. Make sure you're subscribed to the show so you can listen to all the episodes. We're excited to have Jay with us today, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars, and leave me a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.